Hey guys, this is Brit Brad again, and this is part three. And you can, if you're looking at the time and stuff like that, you can tell I'm kind of just banging these out. But I want to do them in separate videos, that way you guys don't have to sit through a whole like 20 minute video of all these questions. Like I said in the video before, um, I will put down the people whose questions I'm answering in the description box down below. That way if you don't see your name and you don't want to watch the, um, the, the video, you don't have to. But I want to make sure that I get to all these in as little time as possible, spread out, you know, that way. Yeah, like I said, no hour videos for Mama. Okay, let's get her done, right? Right into it. First question, Leela VSG. Hey, sweets. She asks, how has eating veggies been for you? So veggies sit really well. Like, they are phenomenal. Lettuce and asparagus and um, onion and spinach and zucchini because we make zoodles so they all sit so well in my stomach they don't i don't have any problems with them they are comfortable to eat i find i can eat more of that than i can eat protein however i can't eat a whole heck of a lot of vegetables because i can only get two and a half ounces in a sitting of everything so i have to focus on protein so i usually do two ounces of meat at like dinner time i do two ounces of protein and then half an ounce of like a veg so like a tablespoon like really nothing of vegetables so unfortunately i can't eat them because i just don't have the room for them but they do sit very well and nice and uh, i i do like my vegetables i wish i could eat more of them but i will get there i will get there um next person doug peterson didn't have a question to ask but said congrats and thank you, Doug. I do appreciate it. Next person, KCVSG. Hey, sweets. She asks, do you find that days off work are harder to stay on track when it comes to your eating and water intake? So my schedule is really weird. I will say that on the days I work, it's actually a little bit more difficult to track what I eat because I sleep in chunks. So it gets more difficult to get like the way I'm eating and it feels like I'm constantly eating sometimes because I sleep so much. I don't know. I have a really weird schedule on the days that I work. So I would say that my water intake is spot on on the days that I work and so is everything, but it's more difficult to manage. Whereas on the days off I have, I'm like breakfast, lunch, dinner, and it's normal. Like it's a normal, like I feel like a normal person and it actually is like, it's easier to track, but then I find I slip up and forget to get water in and shit like that. So on the days I work, I get in better because I'm more on the ball. On the days I'm off, it's just, I don't know, I guess I'm not used to being a normal person. <laughs> Thank you, sweets. Next person, Mandy Ratliff. I hope I say your names right, by the way. I suck at that kind of shit. My question is, what does your exercise regime, what does your exercise regime now? I think you mean what um, is your exercise regime now? And do you have any future exercise goals in mind, such as running a marathon. Okay, so my exercise regime is I walk about 11 to 15 miles a day, and that's because of work. Generally, I'm at 10. Like, on the days off I work, I walk about 8 miles a day. Um, on the days that I work, I can walk anywhere between 10 and 15 miles a day, so it just depends. But 10 and to 11 is my sweet spot as far as how much I walk a day. I also like to bike, and on the days I bike, I bike 8 miles um, in an hour. So that's like exercise for me right now. Um, as far as running is concerned, I know what shin splints are. I've had them before. They suck. I don't want to get them again. I am not going to run until my weight is at least under 200 pounds. Uh, and as far as running marathons and stuff, um, I'm not, okay, so my father was a marathon runner. He ran up buildings. He ran in every marathon in Chicago. He had medals, and he was really good at that. And now he is still very physically active, and he likes to bike, but his knees are shot because of the uh, amount of stress that running can put on your joints. And I don't want to necessarily go down that route with like my father. So although it would be cool to maybe run one marathon at some point, I don't see that as my future. I am actually way more into the biking thing. Like I want to do a bike tour. It's a lot less aggressive on your joints than running is. Um, and I don't want to have like knee issues when I get older. I, I, I mean, I'm sure I'll have other issues. So I guess you pick your demons, right? You pick your issues. But um, yeah, so running is not really my thing. I like to run. I do like to run. I've always liked running, but I have to be very cautious when it comes to the joint stuff. I don't want to ruin my stuff and 
Um, I would way I would go way more into the biking and the rollerblading and things like that than I would running. So I hope that answers your question, Suits. Experiencing Nirvana. Hey girl. Puppy farts. She asks. Um before surgery, what was your number one thing on your bucket list? And has it changed since surgery? And this is a hard question because I don't really have a bucket list. Like, uh... um, my bucket list, even before surgery, was biking. Like, I really wanted to get into it. I really wanted to do, like, a bike tour, like a long one. And sorry, I'm saying, like, a lot. So I think that hasn't changed. I think it's actually become more possible since I've had surgery. So I don't think that has changed much. So I'd say a biking tour. I would really love to be able to, like, bike a long distance and shit as long as my tailbone stops being a bastard i think i could possibly achieve that goal so that is definitely my bucket list item number one for fitness at least for sure um everything else like i i don't know i guess i never i was so unaware of how much my weight affected my daily life like i thought i'm gonna go skydiving and i'm gonna go bungee jumping i'm gonna do all these things and didn't realize that my weight is such a factor in those types of things um that it didn't, it didn't dawn on me that that was an issue until like, well, until I started this whole process, I guess. So yeah, bike tour. This is a long-winded answer to your question. Um, CJ Shrink. Hey, sweets. She asks, um, what has been your favorite NSV so far? So I answered this on, on the other video, but I'm actually going to give a different answer because there's been so many cool NSVs I've had. So the last one I gave was my ring, like that bastard ring that came off. But I will say up there in like that top category has been my body pain that has gone away. So I used to have foot pain and back pain and knee pain and um, everything hurt all the time. And now that has completely gone away. I don't have foot pain anymore. Like I would step out of bed and as soon as I stepped out of bed, my feet would hurt. Um, my back pain, anytime I do anything, my back would start to freaking hurt. And... Um, my knee pain would be like going up and down stairs and things like that. And those things have pretty much gone away. Like I don't have any of those issues anymore. So that is definitely a great NSV. One of the best NSVs that I have so far. Thank you, sweets. Next question. Tell me how you stay motivated and not get down with the scale stalls. So I haven't had a stall yet. But I have seen the scale like get stagnant for a few days. Um, I'm not, I don't, I just, I guess... I'm an upbeat person and I know by watching a billion of these videos that it's going to keep going. Like I'm not going to stall forever. So I don't have that trip in my mind that thinks that it's going to stay forever at one number. Um, I, I know that it's going to continue. So I just keep that in, in, in my head, keep doing the right things, keep doing what I'm supposed to be doing. And also I keep in mind that sometimes your body just likes to adjust to things and you have to switch it up. So I change it up as much as I possibly can so and looks like I can answer one more question from another page here we go um let's see autumn's time hey sweets she asks did you find the dog I was wondering oh okay I think I already answered that in a, di a different video but yes we found the dog out on the farm I was wondering what you wished you had done before surgery to prepare for, prepare yourself and what did you do? So what I did was I started the pre-op diet like six months before because I suck at getting, um, I love carbs and eating low carbs part of the lifestyle and I wanted to get used to it. So I started that like five to six months before surgery. Um, so I incorporated that as soon as possible. I incorporated all the rules as soon as possible. And I also wish that I possibly could have focused more on eating slower because I suck at that. I don't know if it's something I could have fixed by the time I had surgery, but it's something that maybe I could have possibly worked on better because the consequences of eating fast suck. And I wish I maybe would have focused on that just a little bit. Um, but I don't know if it's something I'll ever be able to fix because I suck at it a lot. So I hope that answers your question. Um, also, I have a pre-op, post-op um, video. If you look, it says like pre-op, post-op, um, five things I advice I'd give somebody else, you know, it's, it's in there. Um, and that gives you a whole list of things that I was very glad I did and would recommend someone to do before. Um, Kelly gets her done. Hey sweets. It says, what do you do? What do you find as your weakness as far as the food? My weakness 
when it comes to food is chocolate. <laughs> I like chocolate. But I don't have any too many trigger foods. Like, I don't have foods that, like, if I have one thing, I, I will eat a bunch of them. So chocolate is definitely a weakness. It's something I still eat. I just eat tons of dark chocolate instead of normal milk chocolate. So I found a way to incorporate it into my diet without going balls to the wall. I have this really good sea salt um, chocolate that I like. It's very low carb and it's, it's good and it's, it's like it has a lot of cacao in it, if that's how you fucking say that word. So um, I found a way to incorporate it. Bread is another one of my like touchy areas. I just don't eat bread anymore. Um, I, do, I do have some substitutes. I get wraps and things like that. But it's so filling and it makes me feel so icky when I eat anything with carbs that I tend not to eat like bread and pastas and things like that anyways just because it makes me feel bad. So yes. Next one. Watch Adrian Shrink. Hey girl. She asks... Has it gotten easier to do all of the walking you do at home and work on your knees and et cetera? Yes. The pain that my knees experience, that my back experience, my feet experience, that's gone. That's completely gone. It goes away like, like that. I mean, you don't need to lose a lot of weight for that pain to pretty much go away. I think it was within the first, like, 20 pounds that that, that st com greatly diminished. So, um, yes, it has gotten easier. Not because the walking but because of the weight. Like, I walked a lot last year. I walked, like, I, I mean, I didn't walk as much as I do this year, but I walked at least five to six, maybe seven miles a day last year when I had didn't have surgery and was 300 pounds. But that didn't help my knees at all. But the weight loss did. The, uh, the, losing the weight helped me so that now I can walk more. Okay. Curvy girl sleeved. Hey, girl. She asks... What's something you weren't able to do prior to surgery that you are you are able to do now? Walk 11 miles a day? <laughs> I mean, I couldn't walk this much before. I was able to walk about 5 to 7 miles last year, and now I can walk 11. So I've really been able to, to boost up the walking um, like crazy. Um... And I mean, there are some other things like touch the middle of my back with my hand. I can, I can actually do that now. <laughs> Before I couldn't do that. Um, and there are some other things that are private <laughs> that I could do now that I could do before. Um, but yeah, it's flexibility definitely changes as you lose some of the girth, you know, some of the weight you got on. Um, w WLS journey with pickles. She says, Hey girl. And I say, Hey girl. Next person, Trish H. She says, do you still have head hunger and how do you deal with it? So, hey Trish, how's it going? Um, I do still have head hunger. That's not a, that's not something that's ever probably going to go away. If you have a food issue, you're going to have head hunger. Um, it's just the way it is and it's probably not going to go away anytime soon. Um, how I deal with it, it's tough. Head hunger is not something that I easily deal with. I, if, if I cannot satisfy, if I can't ignore it, and I cannot satisfy it with water. Like if I get about a head hunger where I want something, I generally try to ignore it as best as I possibly can. But I know that's not necessarily feasible all the time. Um, I drink a ton of water to try to ignore it. I will focus on something else like cleaning or walking or something else to distract my mind, coloring, whatever it may be. If that doesn't satisfy it, then I will indulge my head hunger. And the reason, you, the difference between head hunger and real hunger is that head hunger is usually specific. And I could go into all the little things, but head hunger is usually specific, like you want something specific. If you are hungry for pizza, that's not hunger. That's head hunger. Um, hunger is more of like an achy, like I get an achy pain when, I, when I'm actually hungry, hungry. So it's a completely, one's physical and one is like a mental thing. So, um, but anyways, I usually just indulge it. I just pick healthier options to indulge it with. Or I pick something I don't, like, my head hunger is like, you want cookies, and I'll have, like, a piece of cheese. That way, I'm still full, and my head hunger is kind of like, eh, whatever. Since I'm full, I, I don't want to eat anything anymore. So, I hope that answers your question. Head hunger's a bitch, girl, and it's never going to go away, and we all deal with it in different ways, and it's it's one of those things that, that's, the, that's one of the hardest parts of this is head hunger, dealing with that. So, um, so my next, my last one is Deborah. Leinbach, and I'm so sorry if I said your last name wrong. She asks, and she just had surgery on May 2nd. Woo! So you're like a week out. Congrats, sweets. Or actually like two weeks out. Jesus Christ. You're like two weeks out now, girl. Congrats. 
She asks, um, what is your bucket list item that you are working for? Um, I answered this a little earlier. It is to go on a bike tour. I love biking. I really want to become more proficient at it. I also want to get into um, some rollerblading type things, roller skating type things. Um, but that's like, that's like a far off thing. I really just want to um, look into the bike tour. Like I really want to bike far. And I keep saying like, I'm so sorry. So that is my video. I hope that answers all of your guys' questions. Thank you so much for answering it. And this is um, part 50 billion and I will do 50 billion more. Okay, guys, I'll talk to you in a bit. Bye.